uh, we are to start this topic membrane separation what does membrane separation means basically this is just like conventional separation by using a filtration media and that filtration media in the case of membrane membrane separation is known as membrane itself and that membrane is selective in nature and uh, what is the basis of selection of membrane that means on what basis membrane decides that what free or what components are allowed to pass through membrane and what are what is not allowed to pass through membrane is decided on the basis of the pore size so just like conventional filter what do we have is we have some pores in that filtration media and those pores are allowing the molecules or atom or whatever moieties are there of either equal to or smaller size than the pores to pass through and larger molecules and other things are uh, either trapped in the pore or above the pore so uh, in the case of membrane separation also that is the same basis here except electrodialysis in that electrodialysis step we are having uh, a different scenario along with this as well so basically we are having four different kinds of membrane separation process in general which is reverse osmosis ultra filtration then micro filtration uh, uh, and uh, nano filtration nano filtration has not been shown to you in this case here and uh, what are the ranges and uh, what for we do use these membranes you have already covered so this uh, this particular figure is showing that what is the range in the terms of micrometers for pore size or for the uh, components that can be separated out relative size of common materials so as to have a comparison and approximate molecular weight which we can have passing through the membrane and this is what that particular process can be called as and here you are seeing the comparison that whether a particular particle can be visible to eye or microscope or a scanning electron microscope and scanning transmission microscope so this st scanning transmission microscope so here we are having this reverse osmosis nano filtration ultra filtration and micro filtration so here you can see that there is an overlap in between the ranges in uh, which these things work so here you are, you are seeing that reverse osmosis some part is overlapping with nano filtration for nano filtration some part is overlapping with ultra and for ultra filtration some part is overlapping with micro and for particles filtration this is the normal conventional filtration which is dealt through so here you are seeing the structure of a membrane basically ultra filtration membrane so here you are seeing a 3d mesh structure through which the free which is required to be filtered out would be subjected to pass through and in this pore size we are seeing that there is a no uh, there is no through pore and we are having various pores connected together so particles are required to go through in a zigzag fashion now coming on to electrodialysis system in this system we are having some selective membrane anionic and cationic so here you are seeing anionic uh, selective membrane and cationic uh, selective membrane so what does anionic selective membrane do it passes the flow it allows the flow of anions and in the case of cation selective membrane it uh, allows the flow of cation what do we mean by anion anions are negatively charged ions and cations are positively charged ions cations go towards cathode which is negative anions go towards anode which is positive so uh, how to remember uh, regarding this anode and cathode and anions and cations is that you can remember a simple thing that when you learnt in your primary school abcd so a was the first thing which you learned similarly when you studied mathematics after counting what you studied first was addition so a and plus you can remember that so anion this uh, not an anion, anode is positive so anode will attract anions hence anions will be negative so you can remember anode is positive so in english a is first thing in mathematics positive plus is first thing summation is first thing anode is positive and anions move towards anode hence they would be negative so whatever is left is for cathode and cation is it all right yes sir now uh, uh, in this particular diagram what is shown is that when anions are and cations both if 
both of uh, of them are present in a stream then due to this positively charged membrane force so this is a flow channel in through which these anions and cations can pass through through this positively charged force only negative charged ion can come in because positively charged ions if any are there they will be repelled before even they try to enter this pore so only this negatively charged ion can come inside the pores and hence can pass through similarly for cation selective membrane the membrane itself these pores are negatively charged and hence they will allow only positively charged ions to get inside the pore and whatever can get inside the pores can also come out of the pore at the other end now why these and uh, uh, membrane and ions will not bind together and be blocking these pores is due to presence of this anode and cathode so here you can see this one cell which is used for desalting of water so at the end at this lower end where feed water is being shown so this feed water is having some salt in it means both positive and negative ions are there in this mixture and we are having these membranes placed like this so this is anion selective membrane this uh, this colored portion this is cation selective membrane then anion selective then cation selective and hence the space between this anion and cation selective membrane is a flow channel and this cation anion this is again one another flow channel and so on and the space between this uh, uh, last membrane on both edges and this anode or cathode so whatever electrode is there this is the flow channel for the electrolyte so what we are having here uh, have you seen here is uh, that we are separating this feed water into five parallel stream it can be three it can be five it can be seven it can be nine so it has to be an odd number so that we can have this kind of array so if anion selective membrane is there in the start then there has to be a cation selective membrane at the end why so you can just see here that in this particular flow channel in between a anion and cation selective membrane so this water which is coming inside it is having both positively charged ions and negatively charged ions so this positively charged ion which is a cation will be attracted towards this cathode so this is a cathode and it will pass through this cation selective membrane but it will be repelled by this anion selective membrane and will not reach here this uh, negatively charged ion which is an ion will be attracted towards the anode at this end will pass through anion selective membrane and go towards anode or uh, this side but in this particular channel if this is passing through this anion selective membrane it will be repelled by this cation selective membrane and hence we will be having alternate channels with this demineralized stream and uh, having higher concentration of mineral stream so here in this cell a what we will be having is this cell a outlet will be having demineralized water because minerals or ions are uh, both positive and negative can pass away and in this cell b which is in between this cation selective and anion selective membrane cation selective membrane is towards this anode anion selective membrane is towards this anode uh, cathode here we are having higher concentration of ion so this is the alternative channel so here you can see this channel this channel and this channel have been clubbed together and we are having concentrated brine why brine because salt has concentration has increased and in these two channels we are having desalted water so this is how this anion and cation selective membrane will be working so this is Uh, along with the application of that four sides concept this uh, electrode uh, uh, this anion and cation selective membrane as well so these are some of the uh, equations uh, which are used for this uh, uh, process uh, uh, this is reverse osmosis membrane system you can see that how membrane moves through this cellulose acetate membrane it has been also uh, just explained in detail via this diagram that chemically what happens so here these are temporary hydrogen bonds forming then passes on to the next then next then finally it can come out at 
at this end. Now moving on to this particular formula. So basically what this formula is, this is van Hoff equation. So here you can see this is van Hoff equation and this is used to calculate osmotic pressure of a dilute solution. Osmotic pressure is denoted by the symbol pi Greek alphabet pi, this is capital pi and in van Hoff equation the colligative property which is osmotic pressure is calculated as CRT by M where C is the solute concentration in kilogram per meter cube. So here you are seeing that this is basically uh, the units are similar to the density concentration is kg per meter cube that how much how much kilogram of solute is there per meter meter cube of the whole solution that is C. So, this is not density but the units are with respect to this part. R is gas constant, universal gas constant for which we know the value. Value for gas constant is 8314. You need to remember that. So, universal gas constant which is a constant and has a single one value. And T is the absolute temperature. So, it has to be taken in Kelvin only not the degree Celsius and M here is the molecular weight of solute. So, this M is for solute. So, whatever is getting out that solute uh, uh, or we can say whatever uh, is being solubilized in a solvent that is solute. So, uh, basically as it has been indicated that osmotic pressure is a colligative property, basically those properties which depends not on the weight, size, concentration, anything else, but only and only on number of particles present is known as colligative property and there are four of them, boiling point, freezing point, osmotic pressure, vapor pressure. So, for calculation of osmotic pressure, this is the equation and uh, just to see this numerical exercise. So, you are required to estimate the osmotic pressure of orange juice with 11 percent total solids at 20 degrees Celsius. So, how to calculate? on the basis of this equation, we are required to calculate C, R we know, P has been known as 20, convert to Kelvin, M is molecular weight. So, how can we know this uh, basically what is the value of C, concentration. So, here you are seeing that density of orange juice based on density of carbohydrate is this much. So, basically if such a question will come in examination, then this information will also be given to you. Otherwise, you need to assume it. So, what do we want to calculate is osmotic pressure and for osmotic pressure we want to know the values of these four parameters. So, we must know what is that thing which is causing osmotic pressure. So, in the case of a fruit juice, we basically consider the major constituent of fruit juice is its sugar content and for fruits we have many saccharides. We may have monosaccharide, disaccharide, oligosaccharide, polysaccharide many things are. So, to simplify the problem, we will be considering that orange juice contains primarily glucose only. So, we can simplify this solution by considering orange juice as a solution of just glucose in water. So, if we are having 11 percent total solid, that means 11 percent glucose is there. Are you getting this point? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So, to calculate this T, what has been done? You see here. So, 11 percent then density of glucose. So, here this density of carbohydrate basically the glucose plus we are having rest of mass of water. So, 0.89 means 89 percent. This is density of water at 20 degree Celsius. So, density of water changes with temperature also. So, 1000 is the value uh, not at 20 degree Celsius. So, overall density comes out to be this one. So, this is the density of the orange juice. Okay. But we are required to calculate the density, not density, concentration of solute. So, what do we need to do here is we need to from this per much density, only 11 percent is for due to the glucose. So, we need to multiply this with 0.11 once again. So, this was the density of whole orange juice. We are not required to calculate density of orange juice. We require to calculate solute concentration. So, kg per meter cube we already got, but this is for whole orange juice. We are required to calculate out of this much, how much is due to this Ts. So, we need to take 11 percent of this value. That would be the value of C. Then for R, it is 
8314 for T temperature 20 degree Celsius convert into Kelvin it comes out to be 293 then divided by M M is molecular weight of glucose so molecular weight of glucose is 180 kilojoules per kilo uh, kg mole so here you are seeing the concentration C has been calculated as 11 percent of the density so this is what comes out then putting in this equation so this is C R T and this is M so how to calculate uh, molecular weight of glucose chemical formula for glucose C6 H12O6 so carbon is having molecular weight of 12 into 6 plus hydrogen is having molecular weight of 1 into 12 and oxygen as it is having molecular weight of how much 16 into 6 when we add all of them together we get 180 molecular weight of water 18 so h2o you uh, similarly you can calculate that so this was the osmotic pressure value with respect to vent of equation so to calculate this osmotic pressure one scientist went off has proposed this equation another scientist gibbs has proposed this equation so if we again attempt this same question by using this equation we can see that uh, what is the difference and how much it comes out to be from here it is 1583.5 and uh, in the case of gibbs relation we just see what what does it uh, require r and t is same as before and c by m has been converted into this particular expression here r was universal gas constant t is the temperature in kelvin xa and vm vm is the molecule molar volume of pure liquid so this is the molar volume of only pure liquid means uh, uh, whatever content we are having out of that uh, the uh, solution uh, the uh, solvent part and xa is the molar fraction of pure liquid so out of the solution we are having two components one component is solute another component is solvent how to differentiate between these two is solute is in lesser quantity solvent is in higher quantity solvent is in continuous phase solute may not be in continuous phase okay so xa for this a a component first component that is the solvent and this is the molar volume volume this table is indicating some of the fluids with uh, this concentration and uh, these are the osmotic pressure value so here you are seeing orange use 11 percent ts we calculate it like this and it is giving at room temperature not 20 degrees celsius this is at room temperature this is 181587 uh, now with respect to that gives the same equation same uh, same numerical you just see what is the change here so to calculate xa so in that gibbs relation we require xa and vm r and t were same and negative sign is there so xa is calculated like this so here you are seeing that on the top we are having uh, water so water 89 percent 18 was its molecular weight at the bottom this is the uh, weighted average so 0 0.89 89 is water 18 molecular weight then 11 percent was solute uh, means glucose and 180 its molecular weight so xa comes out to be this much so molar fraction mole fraction of pure liquid that is water is com coming out to be 98.78 percent and regarding the molar volume of water so molar volume of water how do we calculate it so we we were having the product density already we what do we do is to convert it into molar volume uh, uh, molar volume is meter cube per kg mole we are having kg product per K, meter cube product so uh, to convert it into this particular form we multiply it by uh, this uh, con percentage concentration of water which is 0 0.89 89 percent divided by its molar weight molar uh, this molecular weight so this is 1 over vm we invert this and we get this much is the value of molar volume so this xa and vm both are for water not for glucose so in the uh, van top equation it was on the basis of solute this is on the basis of solvent so we are changing the 
this is now putting these values in this formula so r then t then log nature of xa and uh, uh, this vm uh, at the bottom we found out this is the value 1573.8 previously what we get 1583.5 so same numerical different values and also this this particular value is different here basically this is at room temperature not at 20 degrees Celsius. so that is why there are some differences now coming on to further more uh, uh, equations which can describe this phenomena so this is a, a, a hagen poisley law and it can be used to develop a relationship between flux through a membrane and pressure differential across it so here in this equation you can see n is the flux of solvent so this is solvent means that water component kp is permeability coefficient of membrane delta p is pressure difference in the uh, transmembrane hydrostatic pressure delta pi is difference in osmotic pressure so suppose we are having one membrane on one side of membrane we are having solution on other side of membrane we are having permeate so permeate is a pure solvent in the case of uh, say reverse osmosis so across the membrane we will be having on both sides different pressure so difference between pressure is delta p and delta pi is difference between osmotic pressure so because we are having different concentration on different side of membrane so we will be having different osmotic pressures so delta p minus delta pi that is this term kp is the permeability coefficient of the membrane and n is the flux of solvent permeation so this solution this particular uh, equation is based on hagen poisley poisley law and this was modified further by matsura et al in 1973 so basically these equations you need to remember and what will be do with these uh, equations is we will be solving some of the numerical based on these equations so you are required to remember these equations so matsura proposed this equation differently so in place of delta pi he replaced it with this particular term here so it was pi x c2 plus pi x c where this x c is the weight fraction of carbon in the solution being separated so here we are having x c2 and c3 and what c2 and c3 is there weight fraction c2 x c2 is the carbon contained in concentrated boundary solution at membrane surface and x c3 is the carbon weight fraction in the water passing through membrane so in this case it was with respect to the feed solution and permeate and matsura it uh, modified it with respect to general process and he said he we told that both streams may be organic some carbon moiety some carbon carrying molecules can also pass through membrane and due to that we can have a modification with respect to this thing that c2 is the stream which is just attached to the membrane surface on the feed side and c3 would be the permeated side uh, material so on the other side of material whatever evolves passes through the membrane that uh, weight fraction is xc3 and xc2 is the weight fraction towards the feed side just adjacent to membrane so we can have a difference in concentration in the feed side uh, with respect to the feed channel thickness means we can have more concentration on the membrane surface less concentration uh, above the membrane surface or uh, far away from the membrane surface suppose we are having a membrane so suppose this is a membrane okay so this membrane this is the thickness of membrane and we are having feed going in this direction okay so feed is going in this direction so what happens we will be having more concentration towards this side so there will be more concentration on the surface of membrane less concentration here away from the membrane so feed is passing in this direction on this side we are having feed feed is passing in this direction on this side we are having permeate so permeate comes out at this edge so there will be more concentration on the surface of membrane at this side less concentration at this side more uh, further less concentration as we go far away towards in the feed direction only feed channel side only and across the membrane we will be having permeate 
so in the case of this permeate what we will be having is we will be having some carbon concentration and that carbon concentration which we are having here that is that weight fraction is taken as xc3 and the carbon concentration just near to this membrane at this side feed side is xc2 matsura et al has uh, proposed this equation for deriving of uh, finding out the value of kp which was the per, uh, permeability coefficient so it, it involves k and w and ae and delta P N W is pure water permeation rate. So how much pure water permeates for an effective area of membrane? A is the effective area of membrane, and delta P delta P is same as before. So this is the transmembrane pressure. So difference in pressure here and here. So that would be delta P. Now how we can calculate this N? N was also calculated with other equation proposed by Matsura only. So N is equals to. So so why these many equations were there is if we are adding one. Uh, Thing unknown, then we can calculate it from one uh, one more uh, method or one more equation. So this is uh, basically with respect to reverse, reverse osmosis. In this case, we are having n is equal to S P times one minus X C three upon X C three C two X C two minus C three X C three. So these equations would be much more clear to you when we would be uh, doing some numerical based on these equations. So you are required to remember these equations. So what is these things uh, here? And one more value was the, uh, with respect to this uh, uh, reverse osmosis only. N is equal to KMC one one minus XC three XC two XC three XC one XC three. So here now you are getting more variables. So here we had XC two and XC three, which I have already explained to you. One more XC one has come here. Then K one C one here SP. So what uh, what are these C one C two three C three and SP? SP is the solute transport parameter, which is a function of solute and membrane characteristic. So how much solute can be transferred by a membrane? So if we are not having this value KP, we cannot ca calculate the value of KP. So these equations will uh, cannot be used. And if this also fails, then we can use this equation. Here we need S instead of KP, and we can also use this equation. So SP is a solute. Transport parameter, which is a function of solute and membrane characteristics, and typical magnitude have been measured and presented in this equation, this table here. So here you can see. sp value of sp for these things so if we are having film j7 these are some of the selected film some specifications are there for feed apple juice with carbon content of this much ppm that would be the value of s so we required to refer to some standard tables for calculation of uh, for determination of the value of sp so if in exam this particular kind of numerical comes either you will be provided this kind of table to be referred to or you will be provided the value of sp as such and if not then you can be also provided with the way to calculate the value of sp so basically you just see that what sp is why uh, where is it required and how much its value can be so if if you are required to calculate its value you must know whether you are having some absurd value so that you can check your calculation and c1 c2 c3 are the concentrations so in this c1 c2 c3 are the concentration and these uh, are weight concentration basically this c1 c2 c3 are the weight concentration and for 1 2 and 3 is the feed stream at the membrane boundary and passing through the so that means far away from the membrane side would be 1 on the membrane is 2 across the membrane is and here this K, km this is the mass transfer coefficient and it is a function of product flow over membrane surface and can be evaluated by dimensionless pressure now coming on to the membrane performance so flow of membrane flow through the membrane can be described by this equation this is mass flow rate in kg per second kw is the coefficient of water permeability in this unit area then this is pressure difference over time so you can simply remember this equation that it is just like that heat transfer equation where we had heat transfer q is equal to h a delta t so h was a coefficient here we are having this coefficient a is the heat transfer area there and here this is the area of the membrane through which the water transfer and this is pressure 
प्रेशर डिफरेंस तो डेल्टा पी माइनस डेल्टा पाई तो ओवरऑल प्रेशर डिफरेंस इफेक्टिव प्रेशर डिफरेंस इज मच एंड एज वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग पर यूनिट टाइम सो दिस पी इज टाइम दिस इज रिगार्डिंग फ्लो ऑफ वाटर नॉट सोल्यूट फॉर सोल्यूट दिस विल बी द इक्वेशन सो फॉर वाटर इट वॉज के डब्ल्यू फॉर सोल्यूट इट इज के एस फॉर वाटर इट वॉज प्रेशर डिफरेंस फॉर सोल्यूट इट इज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सो बिकॉज वाटर वॉज बींग ट्रांसफर ड्यू टू डिफरेंस इन प्रेशर बट सोल्यूट इज ट्रांसफर ड्यू टू डिफरेंस इन सोल्यूट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन अक्रॉस द मेमरेज सो दिस इज सोल्यूट फ्लोरेट नाउ परफॉर्मेंस इज ओपन डिस्क्राइब बाय रिटेंशन फैक्टर रिटेंशन फैक्टर इज कैलकुलेटेड लाइक दिस एंड दिस इज Uh, for the flux through uh, uf membrane and is equal to k delta p this is the same equation which we referred in the water case this equation only so a coefficient area and pressure difference same equation coming back here coefficient then area pressure difference the, this negative sign is uh, to nullify the uh, this effect uh, and also indicating that uh, this is in the direction of uh, against the direction of this concentration means osmotic pressure is high where concentration of solvent is low it is indicating that because in this equation what we are using xa this is with respect to solvent where you are seeing pure liquid which is solvent vm is also with respect to solvent so this is pure liquid again so we are not taking the concentration of solute but we are taking concentration of solvent and osmotic pressure is high when solvent concentration is low so this negative sign is indicating that and when we will be calculating this overall uh, equation here we will be seeing that log natural of this thing will be coming out to be minus some so that would be nullified by this so here we are having uh, ln so this this will be yielding negative value